Yes, you still sound good. Okay, good. Well, hello, Reaperites. Thanks for joining us. We're going to give a few minutes for some people to get in. I'm glad you came to join us. I'll switch back to this. Cool. All right. And we are blending, yes, that is true. Thank you for everybody joining. So I'm Bryce Kokenauer, and with us we have uh, David, he's the manager of packaging at Reaper, and then they have him doing a million other things. So he gets to wear all sorts of hats every day and he'll be helping us today. You can uh, type questions in and he'll be watching the whole thing and he'll jump in and, and, and tell us those questions. If you have a question that's very hard to uh, to type or it needs more description, you can go ahead and raise your hand or ask them and we can see if we can unmute, unmute you so you can ask that question. Uh, I will be heading over to the Discord after this. And so you can jump on there and we'll finish painting up there and, and you can also ask questions and uh, you've got a camera, we can look at it or you can post pictures and be happy to comment on those. Uh, there is something weird that just started happening. It went to your, uh, like I see the paper, I see your hand, but there's like a weird blocked out section on the right hand side. Everyone else is, seems to be having that same issue as well. Okay, oh, it's a chat window. Okay. Sorry about that. Is it still blocked out on the right side? Uh, it was smaller, now it's huge. <laughs> It's changing size, uh, sizes, but it's still there. Yeah, I just resized it, so let me. Um, and to Josh, uh, I'm. Let me check that. I don't believe it should be capped, but I will see what I can check. I'll grab John because he'll know more about that than I will. Okay, we're gonna wait a minute while he checks with John real quick, and I'll see if I can get the chat to show without showing on the screen. So in chat, can you tell me real quick if you can see the a blocked out section on the right side? It is, yes, blocked. That's weird. I wonder why it's doing that. Yeah, it wasn't doing that when you first had stuff pulled up. Okay, let me share. Let me see if I can share a different screen and maybe that will help. Well, let me switch to sharing screens instead of this my screen. Okay, so that might fix it. Uh, and there's still that bar on the right and at the top. Uh, sorry, let me try one more thing. Apologize. No worries. It wasn't doing that before we started. <laughs> yeah, we had this set up and we actually had it right. So. Just a moment here. I can always minimize my screen or I can resize it to, let's see what happens when I do this. Okay. Oh, and yes, I apologize. If I'm ever unmuted, you'll hear uh, some construction in the background, everyone. I apologize for that, but most of the time I will be muted. Let me close this and try to re reopen it here. Okay, can, is it there? Is it come back? Yeah, it's smaller, but it's there. Well, I made it smaller to see if that make a difference. Okay, let's try this screen here. Well, I only have one screen, and earlier it wasn't doing this, so. Yeah, it didn't pull up until everyone started joining. Okay. 
Okay, let's close some things. Okay. I just won't be able to see the chat if I don't. Well, we can always turn the chat off and I can. Well, we'll just, we'll just leave the chat off for now. Just uh, so everyone's aware, uh, if you have friends who are trying to get into the class, it is now open more. John uh, fixed it so it will allow uh, more people in. Cool. Okay, so we're going to start here. Um, I'll put the chat up here because it won't matter if it's in this screen. So, so I can watch for questions. So part of the stream is blocked out probably right now, right? But I'll make sure I stay on the left side of that. Is that good? Oh, yeah, if you just keep it to the left of the... Uh... Yeah, and then I'll just put the chat down when I'm in the PowerPoint. So that'll be good plan B. Perfect. Great. Well, well, thank you. I'm Bryce Kokenauer. Um, I've been painting uh, uh, probably since uh, 84. Started with a bunch of... Uh, at a started with my friend's D&D &D group, and then we figured out there was actually miniatures to go along with them and thought those were pretty cool. And then I met a, uh, another friend that he actually painted miniatures, and I thought those were wonderful. And he actually painted a cobalt and gave it to me and um, was super excited about that and always wanted to try some of my own. So then we got some miniatures and, and started painting. And then the, the adventure began. So I'm going to... Uh, move on so we can uh, talk about things. So this is a blending class and um, to, create, to create blends, we, we need to move paint around. So I would like you to learn to be a good observer and I'd like you to see that we can actually, we're using a brush to scoop paint around on, on whatever surface we are. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna put in Figure out what's in screen here. Oops. Move my mouse. Okay, good. So let's put some black here. Now, if anyone's ever had to clean a, a floor with a squeegee, you will see. I'm just going to use into my brush. So I'm going to pretend this is a squeegee, and if I we're going to move the water around. You see that they'll see that water always sort of stays behind. And then when I end, there is a pile of, uh, there's a, a group of water. And so as you're moving water on the miniature, there'll always be this puddle. And we're going to be talking a lot about moving this puddle around and where to leave it. Okay. So another way to make a blend is. Um, see, as the paint starts going away on my brush, you'll see that um, it sort of blends down. Looks like I gotta move my wet palette. So starting with blends, see I've got this pile of, of paint, and you'll see that they'll do this in art classes a lot. They'll make you do this, and you start. I start rubbing away, and as you see, as the paint goes away. My blend gets lighter and lighter because there's less and less paint on my brush. So I go from light to dark. Okay. So now let's throw some white on the palette. So I put white on the other side. Need the pokey tool. Okay, so now I got some white. Thank you, John, for the pokey tool. Let's wipe this off. Where's that paint everywhere? So now if I take this white and I can do the same thing and as I come into the black, you see we're starting to blend now. And there's there was a lot of paint here and, and as I went this way, I get less paint and this way as I went this way. And so when I wanna change blends, uh, whenever I come in with a, a pile of paint, I might blend it this way to make this smoother but then I always want to push this back to the main pile or where that color starts. And see, I just sort of smooth that blend. 
I'll wipe my brush off. I take the black and say I want to smooth this a little bit. I start here and I work my way over and then I'm going to sort of push it back and then leave it back in the pile. I wipe my brush off and then I can smooth this blend a little bit and then maybe I need a little bit of white. And then see now, so I've just got a really quick blend without doing anything except for moving the paint. So you're going to see on the on the demo, I mean on the um, Oh, this is the sky blue but on the the thing i had us work on these three colors here um, to get these three colors and what we can do let's put these three these three colors down so put this and then i'm gonna put the middle color the true blue and then the sky and I have some white and black in here. My black's drying up already, so I'll throw some more in. So when we get to our wet palettes, I'm going to have you write on the paper numbers. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And this is just for teaching purposes. OK. Um... So your lag seems to be a little bit worse now from earlier. I'm not sure what happened from when we were testing, but um, people in chat started mentioning it, so I've been I was watching it. Um, I'm not sure what uh, brought the lag back in full force. Okay, let's close some things here. Here, I'm going to close some programs here real quick. And I apologize to everyone. We've been trying to watch the uh, lag and everything because there is going to be a little bit, but it did get worse somewhere in there. Just a minute here. Let's see if I need to shut down some things. Sorry about this. I apologize. Taking your time here. Uh, and those of you who asked in the... Uh, uh, Q&A about uh, the glitching that wasn't allowing you to log in uh, and for the brief reviewing uh, he had just pretty much just started as, as soon as everyone started joining more okay so how's the lag looking now Uh, it's definitely still there. I think it's a bit better. It's, but it's, yeah, people are still saying it's. I have a hard line in and we were going super smooth and I don't see anything else running. Yeah, it does seem slower than it did yesterday now, but I'm not sure what caused that to start. Let me, I'm going to grab John, see if he has any ideas, because the... Okay, so he's gone to ask John. So, can people see if I'm moving the brush slowly left to right? Can I get some people to type to see if we're lagging still? Okay, same. Lagging still. I apologize. We practiced and everything was working. Yeah. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hi, John. Hi. So, you turned off your autofocus and everything, right? Yep. Um, I wonder if it's your internet. I wonder if the internet is lagging at all. I don't know. Right. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, also in your document camera, is there a way to check the frame rate of the document camera? Like if it's at 30 frames or 60 frames, I don't know if you I can have the hover that. cam that you guys have. Okay. Uh, because there could be a difference between how much you're outputting and how much we're receiving. So um, 
if there oh. if there is an option for that. Um, Let's see. Side by side, multi split, sync shot, snapshot recording, pause, view options. Adjustments, maybe. Bright contrast, white balance, nope. Mm. <laughs> oh, settings. Sorry. Yeah, microphone. Oh, uh, yeah, so there's the resolution. Flicker removal is disabled. Okay. Is 720 okay, you think? Uh, is that what it was at? I think that was yeah. what it was at, right? Yeah. So try um, try 60 hertz. Uh, click on the flicker removal and see if that will do anything for 60 hertz. <laughs> Should I just restart and then come back in? Um, try that. Um, actually, let's do one more thing. So, can you? You're, are you using a video or share screen to share? Share this? screen. Okay. Um, switch. Is there any way to on your start video to in the options for that to choose the document camera? I see what you mean. So sharing the screen, sharing the document camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay, I think it's sharing the camera now. Okay. Okay. Does it look better, chat? Let us know. Oh, a lot of people are saying better. Okay. Yay. Okay, we'll go back to that then. Okay. So let's try it for a little bit and see how this works. And your image doing live is just support 500 viewers. Oh my God. <laughs> Nathan, very funny. All right. Good. Let's go on. Thank you, John. Um, so I've written this one, two, three, four, five. You'll see how these apply because um, I want to apply numbers. Or we're going to put them on the models. And I want to show you how you can use these colors. Um, uh, so let's say I've got a model. I'm gonna, on the very brightest point. That'll be my number one. So I'm going to put a one value in here, and I can do a blend. And you'll see I'm going to move it until the paint runs out. That's harder to see on this. I'm going from light to dark. Let's see this. Now I'm going to move over on the model, and I'm going to put the number two color in. And you always start the color where that color belongs. So you have to try to figure out where the color belongs. So I, here's my puddle of water, and I'm going to move this puddle to the left. You see, as the paint goes away, I start blending into the white, and I make a nice little blend. And then whenever I go back to the white, I just wipe my brush off. I can take the white, I push it over here a little bit, and then I can get rid of this little, put some more white, I'm going to put it down. And I can get rid of this little, there becomes a little, say, and I rub it around, and you see it sort of goes away. I do the same thing. I take this three, put it here, and I have the two. So I can do the two and I can rub this over and you see the paint sort of goes away. And I take the three and you rub it into there and I'll go both ways. Put it here and then I go and I blend away. And then I can put the four and I'll blend it both ways till the paint goes away. And I'll put a little bit of paint here. And then I can do my black and then I'll shade that away. So you can see just by spreading the paint out, I've made a, a blend from dark to black. And this becomes useful. Um, and then when you're painting sometimes by putting your paint on the palette this way, I can mix colors in between. So I can just push these two colors near each other and I can get a color in between. So sometimes you'll you have to fix mistakes. And so you use this to fix colors in between. So then I can move this over here. And so this will be 2.5. And then I'd use this and this will be 3.5. And then I can move these over here and then I've got a 4.5. So you, you end up with all these colors and we're almost on our palette. We have a, a nice blend and we have a blend here too. So I, I when we're looking at this, um, I'm gonna go through the PowerPoint now and I would like to um, 
like for you to pay attention on where the colors would go. So it's great if we know how to blend, but if you don't know where to put them, it is hard to use the blends in a way that, that's, that's helpful. And so I sort of wanted to show you this by just putting paint on here. And as the paint goes away on my brush, then I have, um, it's covering less, but then it's it's sort of mixing with the stuff next to it. And we're just, we're trying to, like there's a very stark contrast here. So we're trying to blend it here. And then there's a very big color change here. So we need to get rid of that. So you see there's always these little lines of, you know, blue to black, you can see this. And so you're always trying to um, get rid of these and by just moving them around next to each other, they'll, they'll sort of, they sort of blend and those, those differences go away. So we're gonna go into the part here, we're gonna talk about um, where to put the light. And I'm gonna minimize chat. Do we have any questions here before we switch? Uh, there was a question very early on asking if we were you going to be using a wet or a dry palette. Uh, that's a great question. We'll be using a wet palette and I'll, uh, I'll show you how to set that up when we get to that point. Um, if you, you don't have to use a wet palette, if you'd like to use something else, then you're welcome. And uh, but we'll be using wet palette for this. So let me switch screens and we'll make sure we're not lagging before we charge on. So this should be the PowerPoint. Is the window blocking it, I believe? Uh, yes, it is still blocking this side. Okay. So I'm gonna shut off chat. So uh, David will watch the chat for me. Yes, uh, and also uh, John Jones asked if we'd be if they'd be able to get a copy of the PowerPoint. You can just p uh, um, uh, just direct message me with your email on the Discord, and I'd be happy to do that for you. All right, so I am I can't see your chat now, so we'll just go through this, and uh, but David will watch it for us. So do keep uh, asking questions. All right. Okay, so when I went to, I, I'm a mechanical engineer by profession, and in college they actually let us take very few classes, and one of the classes I was allowed to take uh, was, a, I had to take one um, class, and so I decided to take um, oil painting, uh, and, and this was my very first assignment. He had us paint a sphere, and it's interesting as a young person, you don't know why they make you do things and uh, it's like, well, okay, I'll paint the sphere. This is really stupid, but why am I doing that? And it's interesting, uh, the things you, you learn and looking back now, I know why they did it. And, they, and I hear all these uh, people talk about blending. And so if you see the upper left corner, that's the light part. And then we go from light to dark. So he's trying to create shape. Um, so now we look at this, we're flipped over here. But you can see we've got a highlight and a center light, a half tone, and then your um, terminator and your core shadow. But basically you see we're going from light to dark. And the reason we're talking about this is so that we can identify what's light to dark. And um, on miniatures, we're putting a blend on it to show the light. So I can do an awesome blend, but if it's not in the right place, then it doesn't look right. So I think this is useful to look at this so that we can figure out where to put these blends. So on this situation, we've done, I have a light at the top and I have a ball that's underneath it and we're lighting this ball. And so number one, remember their paints that I just showed just a minute ago, we had number one was white, number two is the next blue, number three is the next blue, four and then five. Um, so when we're looking at the shape of things, we have to figure out where the light is. And then that way we know where to start the paint and then I can blend it over. So I would put my paint, my white on number one and I'd move it towards two and I'd put number two color paint on the number two place and I'd move it towards the white. And so we're always moving those puddles and then you move the puddle back to where it is. And we'll talk a little bit about um, brush use and how to do that. Uh, so now let's look at a different shaped item. Now the one that always sort of is interesting to me is the, the front face vertical is three as well as the side vertical is three and then you'll see that one of course uh, right at the top is always going to be super bright and then as i go around the corner two is a less bright and three is is sort of uh, 
is going to be our mid-tone and then four gets darker and five gets darker so five is black and one on the top is white so we want to um, make sure that we'll do that so you could even have a face under the chin may have black or a very dark color right under the chin because that's going to be the five so here's another example you can see i've got several things at once here oops let's go back one so you see we go from one two three four and five and then the sphere um, if the light is right on top one at the top three is in the middle and then we have some other shaped things on the lower left you see something looks like a a, a, a piece of bread or an end of a, a loaf of bread you see one is the top two as we go around the corner and then the vertical is all going to be three. So now imagine that um, this uh, piece of bread was a uh, fold on the cloth. So you have to remember that the part that's the highest will be one and then the corners are two and then th and the sides are three. So especially I see a lot of painters on like games workshop models and stuff like that. The this um, the the folds come out horizontally and then people mainly highlight the highest point and not necessarily obey where the light's supposed to be and then you see on the one on the on the far bottom right the one has a larger area because it's got a flat top and then two as you go around the corner and then all the vertical is three so let's look at um, um, this is a historical painting or historical miniature um and it's a pretty realistic looking and i think it's because he's obeyed the light and so if we look at the lighting you can see that the light is above and we can tell because of where the light's hitting on his face and his nose and then there's lights here and you can see most of the light up above so on this next slide we'll zoom in to his face so we can see where these highlights are um, if you look Look at the top of his goggles you see it's very bright on the top and then as we scoot around to the bottom you can go light it gets a little bit darker a little bit darker and darker and then very dark underneath here there's another reflection because this is is above and then stuff below is all the way to black if you look under his chin he does have some color under his chin because that's the reflected light off of his uniform but if you look at um, his neck creases and um, maybe under his cap there's a very dark line because that is the, it's very thin but there is a section where um, where you can see some dark and people say well his it's really in the light you can't see it if you take your hand and you squish your fingers together really tightly you will see little even if even as even though your, your hand is facing up towards the light you'll see black lines between your fingers because down in the crevices it's dark in there so now let's look at the folds on his on his uh, uniform. You can see that um, at the very top it is very light, and then as it scoots around the corners, it gets um, so. Here's the number one at the top. Number two is on the vertical surfaces, and then as it tucks underneath, it gets darker. And so everywhere he's got it up top in this little section, this is uh, probably a number two. And then as it scoots around the sides, then these are going to be threes. And then when it goes really deep creases or underneath, we go black. So uh, on the bottom left of his uniform, you'll see that uh, this is a vertical surface. He's got the number three color. And then there's there's four. And then five is in the, in the very bottom. So as we look for these things, then there's a crease here. It, it goes to black. So um, sometimes when I first started, I didn't realize that... Um, we could have that darker colors in some place so we're always trying to maintain our light to dark transitions when what uh, uh sorry someone uh asked uh just a moment ago about the loaf uh they asked if the bottom side of the loaf would be four the the bottom of the loaf here is would be five because it's on the bottom so this is a vertical surface and then we go to horizontal on the bottom so five would be right this whole bottom here is five and that's five and so anything vertical even across here would be three all the way Kurt so you see how three around the sphere and then as, go, ahead, go ahead and ask oh him. uh he he uh just put another one in there he said that he he meant below the mid three 
So I'm guessing below the middle where that three is. Okay, so the surface still stays. Yeah, and it's 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 good that you're asking this because uh, everybody, I I know that I was super confused about this. Anytime a surface does not change, we pretend like, because I could pretend that this surface is the same as this one. So the entire area is going to be a three. So anything in this and even the front side. So this front side is three, this is three. If we look at the sphere, it stays three all the way around. And so this would all be three. There's not, on these particular figures, there is no four. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you for asking questions. I think it's very useful. Okay. When I, when we do shading, I really like to start in this, in this area here when I'm choosing colors. You'll find that it is easier to shade things than it is to highlight because you have to put lots of paint on top of, like if I put black on everything, I'd have to put a lot of color to be able to get up to white. And it's difficult for the lighter colors to cover darker colors. Darker colors are really good at covering light colors. So it's really good to start a lot of things in these mid-tone areas and shade it down and do a little bit of highlight. Um, and or the method we're sort of talking about, we never put colors except for where they belong. So this would be one, the two color always starts here, the three starts here, four, five. So if you always start them and then blend them and then maybe move them back and then I start the color here and I move it and I move it and then here and move it each way and then they are getting these nice blends. Any questions? Uh, when we do models, we always have sections where we have light tones, medium tones, and dark tones. So this typically would be this, the, the face area, and this might be the, the body, and this would be the bottom. If you look at, if you've looked at old paintings, or these, where they do these portraits, you'll see the faces are very bright, and the clothes are, are not very nice and ornate. And then if you look down on the, the cloth at the bottom, just starts melting into the painting, and everything becomes sort of black. Um, you know, their belly button may be very interesting, uh, but we don't need to paint like their belly button super bright because the, the point of a po portrait is to, to see the face. And with miniatures, we typically have a focus and generally it's the face. You may have a reason to do something else, um, like something uh, like there's a, a, a gem and that's the most important thing and the gem's glowing on the person's face. So then maybe the gem would be the, the, the lightest thing, but you do need to pay attention a little bit to what you choose on the miniature to be the, the focus. So I have a, a bunch of paintings here, and so I'd like to like you to look at uh, somebody's collection here, and you can see, uh, you can tell where he's painted the light. If you look on his face, you can see how on the right, top right, you can see how how dark the shadow is on his face, and it's very bright here. So we go, here's our sphere. We go from light to dark. Superman, he's just blocking out colors, and notice he's he's thrown in all the colors. He has black under his arms. He has this. So there's there's four, three, two, one, two, one. So sorry, one, and then this is a two, three, three is this middle zone, and four is going underneath, and five. So we'll look at this better. So I prefer classes where we're more interactive, where I can ask questions and, and tell people are doing stuff, but we'll just see this. You need to sort of see where we have some lighter areas, and then our mid, mid and then dark. So you can see as we go, He's got his light source um, up, up top-ish, and then it's getting darker as we go down. So we go lighter area here, this will be our middle, and we go dark, and each thing shaded. And what he's done is he's put in his, um, he, he blocked out the blue, and then he started throwing in all his different colors he needed. So he quickly put in the darks, because he knows those are underneath. And I know it's really hard to determine this sometimes, so when I don't know what to do sometimes, it's really easy to, or it's easier to figure out where number one and number five go. So we know that his armpit is underneath everything, so obviously that's a good place for black and, and everything under here. We know that the very top of his shoulder is bright, and then basically I only need to blend between these two. And he knows that he wants to highlight his different parts of his chest, um, and then his rib cage, because those are facing up, and then the top of his, um, so you can tell the sun is sort of coming from the, the upper right, and then so we're coming down and hitting all of this. And so he's blocked out his colors, and you can see here we go one, two, three, four, five. 
you can see the colors that he's put in here. Okay, so here's here's another example. The, the, the light's gonna be up to the left-hand side. And you can see as the color moves around his chest, it goes from light to dark. So he's he's imagined this was a sphere. So one, two, three, four, five. So you can see the light source here. And so on these next few paintings, I'm gonna ask you to see if you can figure out where the light source is. Um, the reason I sort of learned this, I I was I had learned how to do very nice blends, and I took a class with Jeremy Bonamont, and um, I showed him a model that I was super proud of, and I was going to enter it in Golden Demon, and I showed it to him. He's like, "Where is the light? I cannot see the light. You can't fix this." <laughs> I'm just like, "Oh no!" <laughs> it's like I can't fix this. It's horrible. Uh, and and luckily, somebody else in the class had a. Uh, a bottle of simple green and he had crossed out the word simple green and, and wrote I suck and so he handed that to me so I could start over that <laughs> I didn't start over I fixed it but because uh, you can fix it and that's part of uh, learning how to blend is you want to be able to fix things and so but um, I could have been angry about that or I could have figured out okay I need to learn to put light on my models and learn where to put my blends so that he can tell where the light is um, obviously from this model if you look at it you can tell that the light is to the left because everything's dark on the right and every, everything's um, right on the left. Okay, and you can see that he's um, done his color ranges. If you can see, we are very bright here. We go from bright to dark. So his light tones are up here and then medium tones because his belly button's really ripped and he's awesome, but, but not as bright as his face, which is important. You see this bright spot here. And then if you go to his boots and stuff, they are painted and blended, but they're much darker tones than from here to there. We had a question come up uh, about that guy. Uh, yeah. They asked, how can you tell that's coming from the left? I think they meant front rather than from the right. Uh, they would have thought that it was on the the light was on the right hand side with the highlights that are on the face. Okay, that's a good question. So let's here's a good thing to look at. So if I see, I find the brightest point is right here. Uh, David, can you see when I'm using my mouse? Yes, yes, it okay, is good. appearing on there. Okay, I'm just curious, making sure. I'm pointing and nobody can see it. I don't know, this is great. Okay, so we can see that the number one highlight is right here, and we go one, two, it happens really fast. One, two, three, and then we're four on his cheekbone, and then five, you see this darkest point here. So we go dark to light. And so from here, see so this whole area here, we're super dark, like this is like our sphere. So you go, oops, sorry, click. We go from dark to light. And what's happening is his chest is shading his arm, so that's why that part's dark. But if I look at the light, so if my light's traveling this way, it's going to hit right here. And then, then it's going to sh shade. So that's why I say it's really good to identify your, your highlights. And then, you, and then you can shade down from there. So you can see his shoulder is definitely brighter than here. So I go from light to dark. Um, and I'm cruising down. I go from light to dark light to dark um, and then this is sort of facing down and this is sh shading that um, so that's why the shadow and his arm is shadowing that so everything you can see is the light points are, are here here so light to dark light to dark light to dark light to dark um, we can also see the reflections on his handle right here see they're all right here and so then I, I identified where that flexion is and then I go light to dark um, so that's how we can how we can see and see there's also there's a, a light reflection across this face right all through here so then that makes me know that i need to be over here good questions thank you for asking that i think that is useful and it is difficult to see this and so that's why i wanted to go over this so that um your blends will end up being better if i can figure out where to start and end them and then you just you just have to uh move in between so Okay, I'm not going to tell you the answer on this one. Can everyone tell where the light is on this one? This one's maybe a little easier. Here, can we get some votes in chat here, what everybody sees? What do we got, David? I can't see chat. Uh, a lot of rights. Okay, and right. someone said above, front, and right. Upper yep, right. Above, yep, above, yeah. front, upper right. So right and up above. We know it's up above a little bit because you can see that her forehead is super bright. And and then it and it goes from from super bright here. And if I were to isolate this color, I zoomed in on this color, which I should have done. This 
is not skin color at all. It is white or, or close to white. And notice we go from light to dark and there is, there is black under her chin. So it's really odd to think that we'd have that darker color on the chin, but you do. And also I, I go from here on her hair. So it goes from the light colors to black. Cool, so now this one. This one's a little easier too, hopefully. So everybody, I want you to think and put a vote in there. Make sure everybody's still awake. Did we get any colors in there? I'm getting a lot of uh, lower left, bottom left. Um, Very perfect. And, and someone even said behind left, but lower like. Yes. Yeah, you are right. It is lower left and it is sort of behind because you can see that it stops abruptly. So that means it has to be sort of behind because it has to fall off of his face. So that's really good. But my point is still, if I were to zoom in here, tell me what color you see here. You do not see skin color at all. There is white. So when I tell you we want to put number one in number one spot and don't touch it with another color, you want to leave it there. This is this is pure white right here. And then I go to different colors after that. So I so make sure you once you put a color in that area, you don't put another color over it, or else that sort of messes your blend up and won't look right. Okay, next one. This one shouldn't be too bad. So if you've done it right, so like Jeremy Bonamont told me he couldn't tell where the light was and I looked at it and he was right. I could not figure out what the light is. And so I had to learn to start thinking about this. So now every time you look at a picture, you're gonna start thinking, okay, where's the light? So, and as an engineer, every time I go into a building, I look at the HVAC system and see how it's designed. So uh, sorry, and I've ruined your life now forever. All right. All right. Th this one, everyone seems to be saying, um upper left but slightly behind him yeah um someone got really specific they said behind him about one third the way down slightly slightly to the left we'll go with that one that sounds awesome and i can tell that because you can even see the reflections on the sword behind and these little reflections you, you can just draw lines to the light so it's super good to be able to do this and you notice on his face and hair its hair goes up to the number one and so number one's put there and it's not been touched by another color um so so I hope that you can see that. All right, so here's another one. I'll just go real quick. This for, but you can just, uh, oh, go ahead. Real quick, someone someone asked there at the very end, he, uh, they asked, why is the gold on his left arm so bright? I'm guessing they mean down on his elbow or uh, slash upper arm maybe. On his left arm, I see that his wrist has a very bright yellow, or if they're talking about the chest plate, um, I think they mean on his upper arm, like right by the, the cape, between the breastplate and the cape, there's his upper arm has like a bit of a light oh, spot there. Yep. So basically the way the light is, it's just, it's scooting past. It's sort of missing. Like th this, you know, if the light was more behind him, it would shade this, but the light sort of hitting this and then coming past it, hitting that. So, uh, and then you'll see too, even though sometimes as an artist, you'll make decisions to make things look cooler too. So you, um, we, we have these basic rules and then you have to break them. So that's what's fun. Uh, good question. So again, here, I just really want you to notice like on his head and how he's got, he's defined the shapes of things. So that see all the points of light, all the whites put in here, 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 on here. He's done a very comic book style where they put in very bright lights. But I want you to notice that there's these all these white dots or white circles that start out things and then they shade to other things. So uh, my biggest point is that he's he's maintaining the the you know one two three four five. He's keeping them in different places. So here's a, a model that somebody was working on, and I thought this was, and he was doing progress shots. And so the left is 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 where he hadn't put color in. Then you see that he start he puts. Um, the eye has dark under it from the photograph, but then to the right of it, he'll paint in these dark colors. Even here, this is a number three shade right here under his eyeball. And, but his cheek quickly goes from one, two, three, four, five. And it's a really quick blend. So he even has um, really black and dark colors on the face. Uh, so let's look at what, how, what he did. So basically he, you can imagine in your mind that things are different shapes. So I've got an egg on the top and this is the cylinder in the middle and these legs can be cylinders. And this is where you might put highlights. If you look on the left, I wanted to show you where he put the highlights. So the top of the head's the brightest because the, the light's right above. 
and then there's a because it's a cylinder there's uh, highlights all the way down his, his chest and midsection and then his legs have these these highlights are done in this section so the highlights are along this and then they move left and left and right also so here I've moved him over on the right side where you can see um, where he's actually put highlights on the model so if you look at it closely on the left you see there's a highlight on his chin and on the other side of his cheek and then the brightest point is the very top of his eyebrows and then the top of his head and then there's highlights that come all the way down here so you can see there's little tick marks on every little thing where it changes and that's where the highlights are and the legs again you can see on the folds each fold has a number one line put in in there along that line and even look at these these, these um, wrappings on his leg there's a, there's a, a band of light and then the, the light is always on the very top of each band not on the sides okay and so this just shows the light is and, and i'm pointing out where the artist put in all the different highlights um, on the right you can see where those are all the number one locations of the of the color all right so i don't remember why i put that one in so this is a um uh frazetta guy is just amazing with his colors so it's always good to look at art and help you get ideas with the things but you can see that there's this number one. So look, let's look and see how many places you can see number one. Uh, the light is obviously sort of above and, and in front of him a little bit, but I want you to notice where all the ones are and then see if you can pick out some of the black. So he's got black in the deeper recesses right here. Um, his chest goes from light to dark. Uh, so if you can start imagining those things that helps you identify the shape and especially with miniatures, you have to exaggerate things a little bit because it's very difficult to see things. And so uh, when we do blends, you have to do that. So I think you will be a better blender if you can understand this. All right. So if anyone's ever painted a wall before, you'll know that if you just paint one direction, you will see the paint strokes. And, and that is not very desirable. So let's look at the next example. So this person went and did this whole wall and they only painted one direction and they just did it very quickly left or you know up and down and then they just they kept moving over um, the reason you're seeing all these brush strokes is because they did not go different directions so you normally have to go up, uh, up and down and you have to either go across or or perpendicular to those lines to help um, fill in that paint and so we want to do the same thing we're painting miniatures if you always go the same direction you won't have good coverage and you won't have super good blending so you have to get used to uh, uh, moving the brush in different directions and doing other strokes. So paint different directions. Stroke should be applied in a crisscross or crosshatch pattern. And, and then you first apply strokes going one direction, then apply them perpendicular. And I'll show you that on the, the paper here in a minute. Um, so this is the model that we chose. So I wanted to show you, this is uh, where we start with. I normally wash it. And then when I wash it, you can um th they do say that bones can be um painted uh without priming but i was uh, talking about an example of using priming and the reason i wanted to to prime it is because uh, i wanted to give you an example of of the light because i know when you first start it's very difficult to figure out where to put the light and for me, it has always been a difficult exercise. But once I started doing miniatures, um, this priming method, I was able to start learning where the light is and I would see where it is. So um, when you paint, I want to uh, prime. I like to paint them. Uh, for in this example, we're going to paint them all black first. And I start painting at the, the top. And then I will spin the mini around as I paint. And then I'll move my uh, paint can to the middle and then I will spin it 360 and paint around there and then I'll paint from the bottom up that way I have a nice coat and all the crevices are filled because like I showed you with your hands when you squeeze your hand together there's gonna be black lines so all of the uh, deep crevices need to have black lines in them and sometimes you have to go back and and hand paint in some of the black and some of the spots you just couldn't get with the with the uh, with the paint can or airbrush any questions there David uh, I did have one show up actually uh, Ed came in came over to talk to me so I, I missed when it came in uh, a minute or two ago but it said uh, we still need to paint either toward the light or towards shadow correct 
Yes, thank you. We do need to paint towards lighter shadow, and you always um, like how you see how I, I squeegeed the paint over and then moved it back. You want it, you're always going to move it away from itself, and then you put it back into the puddle. Uh, so it will tint the things next to it, but then the main color stays where the color is. So we are always trying to push. So if I put black down, I'm going to go all the way to the dark, and then I'm going to move away from the dark side, like Star Wars, and then you push it back into the dark side. Uh, and if you've got the light color, I'll put the light color down to the very top, and then I'm going to push it towards, uh, you know, towards the middle colors, but then I'll sort of push it back. And when I leave that little layer of paint or there's less paint on my brush, you'll see it, it's starting uh, to blend with the color behind it. So here's what I did. I, I, I used black and I painted the entire model black. You don't see any white areas. And, and if I look underneath, it's black. And so everything's a solid black. Then I have to choose where I want my light to be. And for this particular one, I chose the light to be right above. And, and so, um, so I, I took my spray can from right above and then I sprayed down and you'll see that everything on the top is super bright and everything, and as we go around the corner, so the top is bright. And so here's our one, here's two, three, and there's one, two, three. The reason I chose this model, because he's very roundy. And so he looks like our sphere. So it's very easy to see where the light and dark should be. So the top is one, two, three, vertical, four going underneath, and then five at the very bottom. You see everything underneath is black, black, we're black here. So I'm going one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so this thing is at an angle. So this is all pretty much a three. And by painting this, um, if you're having trouble figuring out what the colors are, this is a really good way to do it. You can hand paint the model all black and then you can spray white on it with an airbrush or, or rattle can. And that gives you a really good guide. Um, so here's looking, all the views looking from the top. I see mostly white. And then if I flip the model over, I should see mostly black. And so even when your paint job is done, I should see very dark tones at the bottom. And then as I rotate to the top, I should see very bright. And if I look at it at the very top, I forgot to put that picture in. Um, if you look at the very top, you can see only white. And as you're painting, you'll say, well, I painted over my pattern, so I can't see. What you can do is you can pretend your eye is the sun or the light source, and you turn the mini where you're where you sprayed it and whatever you can see is supposed to be white and if i flip it upside down if i can see any white then you then it's in the wrong spot it should be dark so um, you can always use your eye to check things so i always flip the model upside down and i go okay is everything still dark nope i messed up so that's sort of a good tool for that so do we have any questions from this point uh, there's nothing in the Q&A. Uh, someone did ask uh, if that was an example of Zenithal priming. Yes, that is what that is the name. It is Zenithal priming. So Zenithal, we're being at the top, and then we're priming uh, to show a light. So um, very good. Uh, someone uh, just threw into Q&A. They asked about the uh, the 45 degree angle gray that is typically used with the Zenithal priming, or are you just using the black and white? I'm lazy. I'm lazy, and so I just use black and white. I, you could use a 45 degree gray. Um, I think it works fine. Um, I did learn a trick uh, this week. I went to a friend's house in San Diego, and he does paint in black, but then he uses uh, the Dalroni white ink to spray on top because the ink uh, is very smooth, and so you end up with, uh, with an airbrush, you end up with a very smooth uh, surface uh, transition on that. Okay, so let's switch screens now back to the camera. And we're going to select just the camera. Great. Okay, so I was going to show, sorry, just a second, I was going to show something and now I, if I think of it, I will share it in a minute. So wet palette, you can use um, anything I've used. I just grabbed a Tupperware lid because it had like a little basin in it. If I look at the other side, it is pretty flat. But I realized that, hey, there's a little hole in this. And I travel a lot for work. And so they, they get to, I just wanted to make my own mobile thing. Um, you could just use a folded up um, paper towel and, and put it in here. 
Um, I bought the actual sponges. You can get sponges at hobby stores for this, really thin sponges. And so then I pour water into it. Now you have to, how much water you use, it depends on where, where you live. If you're in a very humid climate, you're probably gonna get the sponge just wet. Right now it is just sort of, sort of wet, so that's perfect. Um, I'm in Nevada, so we're a lot drier here. So I put more water in and you'll see it'll seep out the sides. Now on really hot days and it's really dry, I might bring the water level right up to the edge of the sponge because um, that works very well. It evaporates really quick. All right, where's my... Oh, I lost my piece of paper. Hold on a second. I lost my parchment paper. So a parchment paper you can use is... Um, um, a lot of people say, is it wax paper? Well, wax paper has... Uh, wax on it so it will stop water from coming through but we want the water to come through so we will use um, use actual uh, parchment paper and that is like a, a baking paper uh, and so if you go to the store it'll have pictures of cookies or something on it um, I had one prepared we're gonna do it again so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the numbers on here one two three four five and that will help us know where to put the colors on the model so if you notice we we curl up it is best to put um, some little paint bottles or something to hold the paper until it relaxes i see a lot of people will automatically flip it over and when you flip it over what happens if i flipped it over you're going to get all these water droplets and these water droplets will change the consistency of your paint. So um, if you want to flip it over, then you need to use a towel to wipe it off so that you're not, um, that's not interfering with your paint because you wanna choose what thickness you have. Um, I normally just put the bottles on it to hold it down so that, um, so they don't have that extra water. And then if I wanna add water, then I will. Okay, so see it's already staying down. So I'm gonna put out paint colors. And if you can look, the, um, on just my demo, just a little bit ago, all the colors are almost dry, except that middle three, because it's a big puddle in the, in the white. Um, so that's one of the reasons I uh, like to use a wet palette, because then you're continually putting out colors to keep them, keep them wet. So sky blue. And then we'll put in the true blue for number three. So you can put these out on your palette if you would like. Then sapphire blue will be number four. Okay. And I'm putting black in the five position. And then we're gonna put white in the number one. For some reason I put it off to the left here. Now, an alternate, if you want to be fancy artsy, blues shade very well with reds. I did tell everybody a certain red, I don't remember. Um, I, I used the red earlier on one of the demos and I didn't, it was either the crimson red or the, I can't remember which color I said, but um, I liked the, the gory red seemed to work a little bit better when I was playing with it some more. Or if you have like a, a more of a primary red or that clear red that is an alternate number five uh, someone asked which white and black uh, paints are you using and uh, someone else also said you were using the crimson red the other day oh crimson red yeah I was so um, crimson red seemed to go really really purpley and a light purple so you need more of a primary red and so that was just a bad choice of my fault so I apologize um, but the crimson red will work just fine too. You just have to add probably a little bit of black with it. The the whites, I'm using pure white and um, pure black, but it really doesn't matter. Just any black and any white on the line. Uh, really uh, linen or white, lin my bottle's really old. My linen white is like one of my favorite colors. You can see it's really worn. Um, so this is a, a, a nice white too. So maybe I'll throw some of that out. 
Oh, I didn't shake it. Give me a sec. All right. So um, it's sort of an off-white, but I really like linen white. It's just really nice. Okay, so here's our colors, and I'm going to show you how you can use alternate darks. Um, once I add these two together, you'll see how they go darker. Are we lagging real bad, or are we okay? Uh, it still seems to be okay to me. It's okay. uh, definitely better than it was acting earlier. <laughs> okay, good. Good news. So, again, I'd be happy to meet anyone in the, um, in the Discord after, and we can show some things. So I just move this down so I can see it a little bit better. Okay, great. Um, so I have a model that I was working on yesterday. And then I have a freshly primed one. So I want to show you um, a good way to start. So some people um, uh, didn't have airbrushes or spray cans available, and that is just fine. And um, you'll be just fine. So some people are ahead of us because they've already got the blue coat on. So let me show you one thing we can do is um, I think I'm going to take a mix between three and four and we're going to start feeding in some colors. I want to make sure the very brightest white stays white. And then so uh, I'm going to use mix. I'm going to take three. I'm going to make a 3.5 is what I'm doing. And that's why I put the colors by each other. Um, the brush I'm using is just a um, for a lot of my work stuff, this is just a number eight brush, an eight round. Um, you can see that's not the, the best brush, but for putting on colors, it's a really good workhorse. And um, these ones I've got, I just went to Hobby Lobby and I didn't even go to the paintbrush section. I went to the, um, the craft section. And if you go in the, the craft section, the, where they have stencils and the big old things of acrylic craft paint, um, they, they have like a bag of these brushes. They're gray now. They look like this, and they're also number eight round, uh, and it's like, a, it's only like, you know, $10 for a pack of 12 brushes or something like that, so they're, they're super inexpensive, but they, they really, they hold a point, and they do a lot of, of work, and so um, a lot of this base coating and stuff you can do with uh, less expensive brushes, because then for you know, 90 cents, I can use this one until it's frayed out so bad that it becomes a glue brush or something like that, um, and then it's just a lot better, so. And then typically when I go to the detail, then I'll switch to my nicer brushes. So what I've done is I've taken this color. This is a starting point. You can always pick up a little bit. If, like I didn't have, that wasn't wet enough. Like I just mixed this. I need a little bit of water. If you come over here and you touch this, this I just soaked up a little bit of water by touching the brush. And I put it here. So I've added a very small amount of water so I don't make my paint super watery. And what you can do is this is between three and four. So that's all this darker area. So I'm going to start very lightly. Since it's very light, you can see that I'm using the colors behind it, and I can still see those colors um, to, so it's sort of tinting everything, and so it's sort of giving me a guide. Um, and if now, now I've rubbed most of the paint off the brush. So if you look at my hand, there's, look how much paint's on my, there's hardly any paint on my brush. And so as I'm rubbing it up here, I am tinting this. I still want this to be white, but it is still blue. As you can see that I'm tinting it. So I'm cheating really well here. And then I want to change, like I said, I'm changing brush strokes directions. So um, one important thing about blending is that you have to move around. Uh, the way the paint works is if I, if I put on a layer of paint, it'll start drying. And as it starts drying, the binders in the paint make it sticky. So I put the stroke here. What happens is if I keep painting in this area, eventually it'll get sticky enough where I'll pull it away and make these potholes. Um, so you need to move around the miniature to have very good blends. So I've, um, I'm putting in this color and it's really, I've got it sort of watered down so that it'll show the, the dark and lights before. So I'm getting a shade by just with, because of the the um, um, the base coat we put on this, so let's put in some more some more colors here. So I've mixed them two, and notice I'm sort of rubbing my brush, and then 
then what, what nice trick is if you've ever sharpened a pencil with a pencil sharpener, you sort of turn it and it sharpens that. If you turn your brush while it's on the ground, it'll it'll make a tip. It'll sort of point your tip for you. And so you'll, um, I I noticed this watching a lot of these really good painters. I noticed that they were they're just loading their brush and then they would spin it as they come out and then that sort of sharpens their brush so you have a nice point. Um, so this is our 3.5. So I'm going to try to find the 3.5 area, which is going to be under here. So I'm going to start the paint where it's supposed to be. And then as the paint comes off, um, then you can rub it on the areas next to it because the paint's been removed. So it's it's like our, our shading technique we showed earlier. Um, and so I can get my brush a little, little bit wet since it's almost gone. You see now I've got this sort of milk thing. And then we can run it over this and it will tint all these other things. So now I've put paint on this area, so I need to move somewhere else. So maybe I'll move up here. Okay, and then we'll put a little bit on this hat. And if you look, oh sorry, if you look at the the bottom of this, this thing sort of goes forward. So this is why it's all black. So if I were to hold him up to the light, I can't see under his arm. So that's why it's all black. So that that should stay very dark. But as we come around the edge, it lightens up. So let's go ahead and mix a color in between two and one. And so then we're going to start putting in some of the bright colors. So um, we know that this is very bright up here. So I'm going to put white. Okay, so then I've got, I've put the white in, and then the very top of his arm is sort of a white. I had some blue on my brush, so you see it's tinting it a little bit, which is just fine. But I need to go on his arms, oops, I'm out of focus. On his arm, I need to go from one, two in this range, and then it goes really quickly because this goes underneath the, to five, or four, five. So let's put down the, you're gonna find that you will need a, A piece of paper here because whenever you load the brush there's always quite a bit on your brush and I want to not have a, a, a lot of paint on my brush so I sort of load it and most of the time you'll see you'll see a lot of painters that they'll do a little stripe on their finger or or they'll they'll load the brush and then they wipe it and then then go to the model so that you have just a little bit of paint but you I just want you to see how much paint's on this brush there's really there's not a lot of paint on this brush right now um, but you can do a lot of work with just that little paint. And by having it thin, it's easier to blend with the things next to it. So I'm going to load the paint. I wipe it off. And then I come up to the model. Um, so let's we did the one on here on this arm. Here, I'm going to move my chair over. I'm sorry, I keep getting out of frame here. So we've done the, the one on the arm. And then you can see that there's a very stark line right here and so I need a color in between because like white the super light blue to black is difficult so let's put our three in and on very small things like it happens very fast so look I'm going to put my three in and I'm using the side of my brush and I'm putting it in the whole location okay I'm starting where it's supposed to go and then I wipe my brush off so there's less paint on it and then I can there's you can see a little, little bit of a line You can see there's a little bit of a difference in color. There's a quick change. And so what you do is you just sort of rub it, but there's less paint on here. And then that, then it sort of blends. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the, the cross hatch. And then you can come across. And that's what I was going to show you on the paper. Let's go back to the paper here. If I've got, so I've got a dark area here and I need to blend up, so I'll put this color next to it. Too light to see, so put a lighter color next to it. Here, I, I just have to put white in here just to show you. Let's put this white, this white color here. So now you can see a very quick, there's, there's two, that's too far of a jump right here. 
And if you start seeing chalkiness, it is because your color jump is too far. So if I if I start painting over this, you'll see, see I'm getting sort of chalkiness is because the jump is really far. So what I can do is I can use the next color over. So I'm going to scoot over on my palette, grab the next color. And what I can do is, remember I said we have to cross hatch a little bit. So if I come in with this color here, say I cross hatched, and then I go the other way. See that that blend goes sort of goes away. And so um, I need to go back to white because it's too bright. So I wash my brush. I'm going to grab some of the white. And I start the white where it's supposed to be. And then I, I put it here, I rub it around, and I'm going to move it over to tint this. And then I'm going to take the puddle and move it sort of back. And so then and you can just leave it to dry here. Because what happens is I'm putting paint on. You need to you put the paint across. I'll draw with a pen. So as I'm laying down paint on something, I want to lay it down. And if I do this, um, the, the most of the paint will, if I take my, this is my brush side, okay? And if I do this, most of the brush, the paint will stay on my brush. But if I come, as I come to the end, and if I lift up the brush, you'll see that you will leave some of the, the darkest point here. So right here, if I've got this white, I put the white over, I come here, and then I'll come, then I push it back after I blended it and then I lift the brush up, and that will leave the paint in the right place. And then now I've, I haven't cleaned my brush, and I can go to the next color down, and then I can I put the color in the two zone, so I lay it down there, and maybe I've got too much paint on my brush now, so I'll wipe it off, and then I can sort of push the paint around, and so you'll see what's starting to blend. And I'm getting paint all over my hand. Okay. So let's apply this to the model now. Okay, so now we've got a very, you can see that there's a, there's, uh, it's very, it's one color here, and you can see we make a very quick transition here. So I need to sort of blend this in between here. So I'm gonna grab 1.5 here and see how that looks. And sometimes you'll just grab it and it's like, oh, that's, that's too, not, not it's too light or too dark and so you just move over so that actually got rid of it okay so now we're starting to blend so now i can see a very strong line right here so i'm going to get my um this is number three here because that's my vertical surface so i want number four excuse me there and so i'll put the four next to it and so i'm going to start four in the range it needs to be Okay, and then you can cross hatch. And then what you do is if you blow across it, it, um, it helps blend it too. So this is a, another way you can do it. So if I, if I do all these little lines, like I'm painting this way, so you see all these little lines, and then when I move sideways across them, I end up with a sort of blend. Um, and so especially when you're going over another color, I run over this, you'll see that it starts blending. I wipe the brush off and then I can grub it in. And you see we're starting, we're starting to make a nice blend from this dark to light. So that's a way that you can cross hatch because normally we want to use, uh, most people will try to paint these with the very end of their brush. You'll be much more successful if you move to the edge of your brush and move it along sideways. And then, but then you have to sometimes do these little cross hatch things to help it. So I'm gonna go, you know, this way, and then I'm going to rotate this way, and then I come in and do these, and then sometimes you rub across, and then it smooths everything. So now we're making, it's starting to make a nice little blend here, and so now we just have another, need to go darker here. So I can put this with the black. Black is pretty strong, so it's generally best to grab the black and then add it to the blue. And so I saw it was a little bit dark, so I kept adding some blue until I get a color I want. So now I've got a, basically you see I've got a blend right here on the palette so I can grab any color I want. Um, a lot of blending is fixing mistakes. So sometimes you have to move along this, like I'll put this color on, it's like, oh, that's not right, so I scoot over. And now I use this color. Oh, that's still not right. Okay, use this color. And eventually you'll find a color that will help fix your blend. So let's see if, if I got the right color to fix this. So I'm wiping some paint off my brush, and then I'm gonna push the paint up 
and then you see how it went up here so I need to push it down a little bit and you see we're starting to blend here real nice um, I'm not going to go all the way down on black but the the paint's been removed from my brush so you can see where it's wet and what I'm doing is there's there's very little on my brush now because I've already put most of it on the, the paint what I'm doing is I'm tinting the color and then I leave it there so I put it down so I, this is where I start putting it and then it's mostly gone off my brush and then I scoot over and I'm pushing it back to the right location okay so now we have a very nice blend from here so now I see it's a little bit rough right here so I need to scoot over my palette. I'll wash my brush because I have to go back to a brighter color. So I go my palette and I scoot over. Okay, and I'm gonna load my brush. It's getting wrinkly and, and you see that I'm always dragging paint out sort of like this. And then I wipe the brush to get rid of the extra color. And I have to do a little bit more because I, we're just refining now. And so I'm putting it in the range it's supposed to be. And then you can do some tapping. And then I'll use the side of the brush to help the blends come up a little bit. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Oops, sorry, I keep going out of frame. Okay, so now I need to fix right here in this elbow crease area. And there's really not much paint on my brush now because I've been using it for a while. So that looks good. Um, so the first thing we've addressed is, is um, the other reason I like this model because it's difficult to think about because we have to uh, think of the, the light moving this way and this way. So it goes from light to dark and then light to dark. But then we have all these little folds in here and we have to obey the, the folds too. So right now we can't see them very well. So I'm going to use uh, probably a 3.5 or something like there. And we're going to put in some of these um, these lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand on the. I zoomed in so you can see better, but the hand goes gets steadied on the the counter, and this way it's steady on the counter. And then I touch my two um, two set my thumbs or the, my hands together, and that helps lock me in, so I have a very steady. It's like a tripod for a camera. So now we can put in some of these dark things. So I'm going to start a little bit. It's best to start from where the dark area is and then move your way up. And then so I've determined that my brush is too big for this. So I, I quickly got my, I went up where I didn't want to. I got the brush wet. I, tuck, I stuck in here, got water real quick. And then you just wipe off your mistake. So it's really good. So if something happens, you just do it super quick and then you can fix it. So now that this is going to be pretty wet, so I'm going to move somewhere else and work on a different part while that dries. Or if you have a hair dryer, you can do it, or I can move down on the model. So I see that there's some wrinkles here that I would like to, to highlight. Um, so we're going to grab the number four, and I'm going to place the four just right on the edges of these wrinkles. Um, so I'm not going too far down. And then I'm going to wipe the paint off, and then I'm going to I'm going to push it back up a little bit. And then as that's drying, I can grab another color. So I'm going to show you what happens when I add red to this black. So I put red in, and right now you can see in the screen that it's very red. So let's take some of this four, and you want to add it to it. And you'll see a point where it changes from red, red to not red anymore. And it's a very dark purple right now. Uh, if I have too much red, it's like here, I'll show you. This is not the color you really want to see on the back. But watch as I add blue to it at some point. Okay, it's almost there. Let's add just a little bit more. There you go. The red becomes very dark. And see, compared to the black, we're, um, it's very close in tone, but this uh, looks nicer on the model. So I will use this dark color. And I'm going to start at the bottom. So I, I loaded my brush, wipe it off a little bit. And then I start in the bottom of one of the folds. Sorry, I'm out of screen there. Out of the fold. And then I'm going to come up the model. And you know, I'm going to lift as I, as I come to the top. So you, so you see as I come up, 
Okay, and you see the transitions are a little bit wide at the top, and that's because I'm using a big brush. You should use a big brush until you get to a point where you feel you can't. Um, so like sort of doing this sort of detail work, I probably should. So I just got my brush wet a little bit, and I'm sort of wiping it off because I'll just fix it in a minute. But if you hold it away, we're starting to make a, a nice transition here. Okay, so let's go. Let's let's move over here while that dries, and we'll do a little bit up top here. So I'm going to take the three because the three is an easy. So vertical surface is vertical surface is everything here. So let's start putting in the number threes here. And I also have to look at the folds where I what the top of the folds are. So here's the top of a fold. Here's the top of a fold. So you can see them going all, all along the threes. Okay, then I can wipe some of this off and then I can blend next to it. And so right now, if you remember, there's very little, see how much paint, there's not paint on my thing, but you can see changes on the model because there's some differences. And notice I've left, I've tried not to touch these darker areas because they should stay darker. And then you can put in some of the dark. And what's happening is these lines should, um, even your shadows should change colors. So just as the top colors change color, the shadows change color. So I put, I started the darkest color in the darkest area. I just cleaned my brush and then I can push it up a little bit and you'll see you'll get a, a transition of color, but it won't be quite as dark. So we know that down here has to be really dark. So then I'm going to put in some of the dark in this area here. Okay. And then I, I you see me, I'm always holding it away so I can see how the, how the transitions look. So let's go up top. So I'm going to go to two because that's going to be everything that is uh, let's see, I'm trying to get the plane right. Okay, so see we got one, two, three. So everything that's in this plane, sort of a, a diagonal, we want to put in the twos. So we can put in the twos real quick. So I'm basically going along and just doing the whole cloak at once because it's really easy to do it. And I'm using the side of my brush and hitting these areas. For your darkest color, another color you could use is the, um, the, the, the clear blues that are really nice for doing this darkest color. Okay, so let's go to somewhere between one and two, because as I come up to the very top, it has to get brighter. So I just put that on and that doesn't seem bright enough to me, so I'm gonna add more white. Let's see if we can, there we go it wasn't showing up, it was a very slight transition. So I'm using the side of my brush and I'm catching each each of these, oh man, sorry. I'm catching each of these little folds. And then the top of his, his hat. And I get the side of his arm while I'm here. So now I have very quick, um, Um, very quick changes in color here, so I can see a little bit of a line here. So I need to move over and get my midtone again and, and, and re and fix that little edge. So you can see that we start making those disappear. Okay, so let me switch to a, a finer brush. Let's do a the zero. This is my uh, Raphael 8404, I really like these. So I, I'm gonna do some of the lines just so we can see if we're doing this right. Um, so I can use some of the red and with that black mixture. So I just touched a little bit of water to make it flow better because I want it to be, there we go. So I don't want it to be watery, but I want it to be able to flow well. So I'm gonna start down here 
and I always put the, the dark color in where it goes, and I'm lifting the brush as I go up. So that I leave, so I leave less paint because it should it should shade the shadow should shade too. So it goes dark, and then I start lifting the brush to leave it, and then I'll, I'll come back and we'll put in some other the other colors. Okay, so now it goes from black and it stops. So then I need to um, use three, have it wash my brush. So then I'll see if that's dark enough. It may not be. Yeah, it works. So I'm changing colors of the shadows as I go up. So now as I go to the top, I want to use a lighter blue for the wrinkles. And so I'm carefully just painting in the, between all the little cracks here. Okay, so I just painted that one, it didn't show up. So I'm gonna to go to a little bit darker. Darker color. And it's realized that the edge of his hat is a, is a number three. So uh, the three wasn't showing up real bad, so I'm gonna put in a four because it didn't show up color-wise. Uh, someone asked if you could move uh, oh, yeah, a little bit more on camera and a little yeah. bit closer to the camera if possible. Yeah, let me zoom in some more. Just a moment, I'm going to zoom in. So sorry I don't have a second camera. Okay, how's that look? I'm going to have to put a... Yeah, that looks, uh, that looks great while you have it in there. Okay, so notice I messed up a little bit, so I just get my brush wet. I'll see if I can go it away. So what I need to do is realize that the edge of his hat is a, a, a number three surface. Um, I need to put out some more of this blue. I put the number three on and it wasn't showing up very well. So I'm gonna use the four instead. Okay, so okay. we will paint right here. So I'm going to paint in just that vertical surface so we can see it. And then there's, and then the edge of his hat is going to be darker. And then the bottom of his hat. So everything, everywhere there's a crack, you always have to make that darker. Just like what before when we squished our fingers together, you want to see the difference there. So the top of his hat is going to be mostly um, white, so I'm going to put in the, I mixed white and blue together. And so the surface is mostly flat, but you can see it's going to roll to the back. And so then I'm going to go the next color down. So really, I mean, each time I'm just touching the paint like that, and I'm just sort of getting that much on the, the brush, so you see how much is on the brush. A lot of times when I first started, I had to, um, I'd load the brush, and I had to wipe it off for the first time. So yeah, that's too much paint. So most artists will paint it and then they wipe off the brush and then you start putting it on. Okay. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. So I'm putting the white where I want it to be white and then I'll move it next door. I wiped it off again and then I move it next door. I'm sort of tapping and then that, that makes those lines go away. So now I have a, a nice transition. And then I might want to paint the edge of his, so it should show up. I might paint the, I'm going to turn the model sideways. So always move, it's easier to paint edges with the side of the brush. So you move the, the model and then I use the side of my brush. Say I miss, I miss, I miss. And each time I'm getting a little bit closer and that way you can get very controlled fine lines until your line shows up. Now I need more paint. So I got just a little bit more. And I changed to the neck to number two color. And then I want the white to show up a little bit. And I just touched the very edge there. Okay, so I have a nice little blend going on there. And you can see there's a if you look right here, I can see where I change colors very drastically. So there's like a little line. 
right here. So I need the color, sorry. There's a color right here that's, I need a little bit of a, uh, the color in between. So I pick up the number two color and I'm gonna put it there and I'm just gonna tap a little bit and you'll see that that transition will work now. So now we got a very smooth blend. Okay, so I can see on his hat that I still need a little bit more of a line right here because it's not showing up very well. So I'm gonna actually take number four. Um, I've loaded my brush and there's a little bit too much on it. So I'm gonna wipe it off so I can get a thinner line. And sometimes you have to paint it a couple of times and then, it, then it'll stay in there. And so I've got this here anyways, I'm gonna touch three right now and we'll put in some of these lines and I can see that I've gone over a little bit. So we'll fix them in just a minute. So a lot of this is all about fixing and are you willing to fix it? Okay, so then I paint each of these little folds in this claw. And then I, I can take the opportunity to have a darker color and as the paint goes away, it will shade a little better. So I can shade some of these other regions and that will help my blend look a lot smoother. So we're starting to, to come out. So I clean my brush because we're going to fix the top of his cloak here. So I'm using uh, halfway between one and two. So now I was painting, before I was painting the, the cracks, and I'm going to paint the tops of these. And I'm still using the side of my brush a little bit, and I keep turning the model so that I can use the side of my brush. And then as the paint goes away, I can wipe it off, and then I can push the paint back up where it's supposed to go. So remember those puddles that we were talking about moving? And moving them up so the blends will look better. And then you can always use the rest of your paint somewhere to blend other, other things. So, and grab three for his hat. So now you see that we have a very, let me finish the hat all the way around because that's just fun. And I'm trying to change uh, directions of, um, trying to change directions of strokes as I do this. Okay. And so I need a, I need a color in between. So I'll go to the two and I'll, I'll start it in between. And see how it just made it disappear. I get a little bit more too. Oops, keep it off screen. I apologize. Not a professional. All right, and then the bottom of his hat needs to start going a little bit darker. So I grab number four. Um, so you see that we have a, a line right here. So you see how I'm, I just sort of rub the paint, and it's in by because the paint's sort of wet next to it. It it makes that sort of it blends it away. So now we see I have a very dark line under the part of his hat that's shadowed. So we're gonna do the, the four and five mixed together. Okay, so I start it where it's supposed to go. And then I'm gonna touch, there's still the four and five is on my brush, but I touched four. So it's gonna mix a little bit on my brush too. And then I paint it right next to it because we wanna make that transition go away a little bit. So it's still really a quick transition. I'm washing my brush off now because I had uh, dark paint on it because I want to go with lights now. So I'm going to put the number three. So this is the middle color. And so I'm putting number three middle color where it's supposed to go. And then as the paint comes off my brush, I can rub it on the surfaces next to it. So I'm just tapping or cross hatching. And what does it makes that that um, that blend happen. It mixes the colors to it. So in my efforts, we see we've got a pretty good blend going there, but then we've lost a little bit of the highlight. So I did what I told you not to do, not to touch the harder, higher point to the white. So we're gonna go back and put some of this bright white in. 
And then here, I'm gonna mess it up a little bit. I'm gonna show you when I go white over other colors, it starts getting, if you can see, it's getting chalky. And that's because the color jump is too far. So what you do is you're just gonna move over. I, I'm grabbing the two color and I put two in the middle here. And then that's that, that, fix, that fixes that chalkiness. So whenever you're chalky, you just have to find the color in between so you can cheat by using um, the blend we sort of have on the palette. And then um, this, this is a pretty good transition here, but it's not super rich. And so what you would do is you want to take, um, I take my blue color because this is the most saturated of all these. It's a very rich color. You could also use this, the phthalo blue. And what I'm doing is I am mixing it so it's very thin, like milky, because we're going to do a little wash real quick. Okay, so if you see, it's really milk textured there. And I'm only going to put it right in this region here. So I even wipe some off my brush. And I sort of put it in and just scrub it around. Oh, I didn't do it on camera. Dang it. I'll do it again on the other side. So I just put it in, and you'll see we're starting to get a very nice, rich um, blend. So let's try to get on the other side, and I'll do it on camera this time. So see that we're just uh, pretty much the same color. So I'm using some more of the wash. I just picked it up. And I'll start it in the dark area, because you won't see it in the dark area. And then I'm sort of moving it over the surface. And I take the puddle, and I sort of I, I push it over, and I lift my brush up and leave it in that area. OK. Then I touched a little bit of the highlight, so we'll fix that. So you do have some back and forth happening. Okay, so is anybody who's painting, let's see if we've got, actually I, could, I should put the chat up now because I could um, see it. Is there anybody that's having any issues or things that we could discuss? There is a couple Q and A questions, uh, one that kind of, ties into this they oh. asked uh, they asked if you could Oops. explain uh, for trying to achieve sh light and shade effects when, uh, when would you use blending and when would you use layering okay huh no it's nice painting I grabbed the wrong color and so I grabbed black instead of blue so I had to wipe it off real quick so let's answer the question here here I'm gonna go on my computer and I'm gonna put up the chat screen so I can watch it now, and I'll put it off on a corner. That won't matter. Okay, so um, the question about layering, and I apologize for the video quality. I don't know why we're having issues. Um, so layering, you're, you're typically putting a, an opaque layer over something and I'm going to stop painting so I can think about this. So you're putting a, an opaque layer over something. Uh, I sort of, and I'm, I always end up sort of doing a hybrid of both anyways. So um, I'm not sure if I totally look at it as um, uh, which is best. You just sort of, for me, I just, I'm always doing a mix of all the techniques. So it's not, um, uh, you're not necessarily do it. So let's, what was that question again, Dave? Oh, uh, the shading layering or, uh, yeah, they asked like, when would you use blending as opposed to layering? Okay. And vice versa. Um, yeah, so shading versus blending, I think it just, uh, depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, generally I'm sort of always doing uh, all the above and so so no that doesn't really answer the question but so now I'm working on the folds here and and working them down a little bit so I first I did the the, the white and then I've switched to number Number two, and then I'm going to do number three now. 
And because this, these arms are really skinny, it happens really quick. They're just, they're very quick little, so it's almost like a touch on every single um, little fold here. So basically it's almost at like a dot's width. And so then I go to this four and then and so I'm just painting in each little thing. And so you'll so you get these very quick shades from your top side here. And then you can put in some of the dark lines. So now this is dry. So when you're putting in these lines, here's a little trick. Uh, remember I told you, you can you load your brush and then you spin it. And that, that gets, so you can draw lines. I think you can see that, so you can draw little lines. Okay. You have to realize when you spin your brush, that if you look at your brush closely, it ends up looking like a knife edge. Okay, so, and even though it is pointed, you will be able to, as you put your brush on the miniature, there'll be a thick side to a brush. And then there's always a part that you can paint it. So when I'm trying to do lines, I want to paint it like this, right? Or, you know, or this edge. So, so you sort of have to, as you put it on the model, you have to look to see, is it that way? And it's like, oh, if I spin the brush a little bit, there's a little edge here that I can paint on. So I get you really nice lines. So I'm loading the brush. So I'm going to paint in these, the dark areas. And I pulled it and I spun it. And then as I put it the model, I sort of look at it and I find out, okay, there's the, there's the thinnest point right there. So then I can put in all these little folds very easily. And I'll put in some black here. So as the folds go down, now I'm switching to the black so that they'll be really nice and dark. So we see this arm, we start getting a nice very Okay, so we'll scoot over. So it's always good to, to move around so I can let the paint dry in this area here and we'll work up here. Let's see. This must go closer to the camera. Does that help if I'm closer to the camera like that? If I hold up higher? Uh, it looks like it might be a little bit clearer when you do that. Okay, let's try that. Uh, someone came in with a question of how do you choose the colors to set up the uh, your gradation? The gradient that you use. Oh, sure. So Reaper sort of makes it easy. I just use, for this particular one, I used uh, just one of their triads. Um, so that's a good way to start. And then I know with blues, I typically, you can add a red at the bottom and that will, um, you can, you can darken red and blues. So if you're painting a miniature red, you can use blues to darken the darkest red. And if you're using uh, blues, you can use darker colors. If we're using yellows, I would use oranges. Because um, if you use black with yellows, it ends up looking very muddy. So if you use dark oranges at the bottom, that doesn't look muddy at all. And so um, a lot of things for colors, I just sort of all... Um, a good starting point is to use the Reaper colors, and then if you don't, then you can start looking at what other people use, and then you'll start getting things that you that you like. Because um, even though a color may, um, there there's values like how bright or dark the color is. There's there's some things to that, and it's hard to choose that sometimes. And so, um, like if I, the this like this. Um, the phalo blue is a very strong color because it's it's basically the, the one of the colors they use to make all the other colors, and so they just add enough binder in it to make it to make it work. And so you can use a lot of the um, clear colors that that, that um, Reaper has, and those will help you um, make your colors more rich. So here I'm going to put a little bit out. And I'll show you what we can do with this. Oh, pokey tool. Pokey tool in here. 
Now this one really doesn't want to come out. There we go. Uh, yeah, good point. I don't know, I'm not trying to make this into color theory class, but how did you know to shade the blue with red? That was just a learned thing. Uh, people um, just from other artists and they, well, artist people who are smarter than me to say um, that is a good way to, to shade that. Um, so it's just something I know and I know there's color theory in it, but we'll just, you know, we probably got that, we can ask Anne on that one. Um, it's just they, I know they always say that black is, is not as doesn't look as rich for your for your shading. Okay, so let's okay, so let's see if we can fix some of these. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint some of these lines in and so now we're just starting to refine the colors we do have a we still have some little problems to fix but now we'll just go in and refine some of these so i'm just moving around the model and there's still just a little bit of paint and so i'm refining some of these lines And so as there's less and less paint on my brush, I can still use this darker color to refine some of this because there's not very much paint on my brush now because I've been moving around. Okay. So now let's put in some of this number two. Let's see if we can, so I'm using the side of my brush now to clean up some of these areas. And then we'll go to the pure, well, to white with a little bit of blue in it. So that didn't show up very well. So then I make it a little bit brighter. And as I paint these lines, oops, see I messed up a little bit. So I just quickly wipe it off. So as I go down, I am lifting my brush so, I, I, so the paint they gets thinner. So if you can imagine that these are all, um, what you can do with your highlights, is you can imagine that, let's see, so I have something sort of blue here and I need to highlight it. The top of the highlight will be very thick and basically, to exaggerate, it is gonna, the highlight looks like a triangle, okay? And the way you comp, oops, not on the screen. The highlight's sort of like a triangle. So here's the brightest, and as I come up, and the way I accomplish this is if I'm using the side of my brush, I'm pushing harder here, and then as I come up, as I come up, so I lift the brush as I come up. So it's hard to show on camera. So as I'm coming across, I lift away. So it's sort of like it's this. Where did my pen go? Oh, so strong pressure here, and as I move this, as I'm moving this way, my oh, I'm off the screen again. Sorry. As I'm moving this way, then my brush is actually coming up like this. So there's a there's a gap here, and so what happens is I do that, then that then the, the line gets thinner. Oops, too much on there. So I'm using the side of my brush.
So I just keep moving around and I'm keeping in that same zone. And then I can get the next color down. You see that the bent blend starting getting more buttery as we as we go around here. All right, so we got ten minutes. Does anybody have any questions? So I'm going to try some of this thalo blue here. It's a very rich color. So I've watered it down to this milk situation here. And it's very dark, so I'm going to start very low. And I'm going to basically move the water sort of around. And then I want to, I'll start by moving it up into the cracks. And I'm always sort of pushing it down to where I started. Okay, so let's see if you can see that. You can see there's a very, um, there's a quick little problem right here. So then how do I fix that? I'm gonna grab um, the next color up. Okay, so that was, that was too bright. So then I'll move down the color. And as you move down, you'll start finding the color that'll work. Move a little higher here. Oh, I grabbed the other model. Uh -huh. I had two models I was working on. I just grabbed grab the other one. It's like, huh, I thought I painted the this hat. So I have to fix the part where I touched it with black. Okay, so let's just fine tune this a little bit. Let's try to go a little bit faster here so we can see what progress we can make here. So this phthalo blue thin down over the black works super nice because then it starts. So maybe you can see the difference between the two. You see how this is on the one on the right is still super dark. Um, and I just did a, a little wash of the blue over it and it's super black still, but it, it looks better than, than just the straight black. So that's why they say that and then I'll show you what happens when you add a little bit of red to it. 
in the very bottom area, you can see a little bit of red, but as I tap it and blend that in, the red goes away, but it just looks super, it just adds, you can't really tell when you look at it, but you can see just a little bit of a red, reddish tint in this area here. So it just adds a little bit of interest. So and that's just something I don't know the physics or whatever, but it just looks cool. And then I can put in some of that at the very bottom of each of these little. So now we're starting to. So as this gets refined, we're starting to look better. So sometimes it's hard to see the blends if there's white areas. Sometimes you need to put paint on it because it's hard to see how the blend's working if there's a, a very stark white surface next to it. So sometimes it's useful to put some of the colors in, even if they're just initial colors, and that will help you see if you're heading the right direction. Okay. So I would like this to be a little bit brighter, so we'll bring it up a little bit. And next color down. So even on the fold, you can see that I'm just, I keep, I start where the color's supposed to go and then I blend it to the color that's next to it. No, I'm out of point, sorry. And then I went into the, the crack a little bit when I was doing it, so then you just fix it. So you're always going back and just sort of fixing things. And then I push, push it back up. So I'm gonna put the halo blue here on the on the cuff here, and then inside this dark area, we're just gonna put some of this dark. And I grabbed a little bit of the red. I may mix it on the palette, but you mix it in here too. So that shadow will look a lot richer, and then I can continue. Oops. Sorry, I just put it. I just put the um, the phthalo blue in this area here. So I'm gonna put it here, I'm gonna paint this this crack in here. It has to be dark. So I'm going to paint all the painting all these lines in and the under areas. Put some lighter colors in here. So all these bottom parts are supposed to be a little bit lighter. So we're basically out of time here. So any final questions and then we'll we'll jump over to the Discord in just a moment.